Okay, so hopefully at this point you're thinking, okay, now how do I do this? I like some of this stuff. I'd like to try it out. How do I do it? And so I don't think that the necessarily the best strategy is to take you through step by step. I think the best strategy is to show you some basic building blocks that will get you started and then get you out there exploring. I think the building blocks that you need are how to create clickable objects, what are hyperlinks, what are action links, how to do animation in triggers, although we're really going to just focus on triggers. And then I'm going to point out that the selection pane is pretty important. The first thing you need is you generally need something to click on in order for something to link to somewhere. And the way to do that is either to print your screen and use paint to edit that into a button you can click, or a lot of times what you'll need to do is create a transparent box. It's going to have solid fill, but it's going to be 100% transparent. You'll know it's there, PowerPoint will know it's there, and when you click on it, it's going to take you somewhere. So first of all, print screen and paint. So when I put together my who the heck knows PowerPoint, that's the PowerPoint I use in nutrition because there's so much various information and I want to collect all this information so we can understand just how complex and how we really just don't understand nutrition that much yet. What I want is a button that will take me out to these places. And the button is a rather large screen capture of the original website. So I'll hit print screen, go over to paint, and I'll crop a picture of the website I want to go to. I'll then paste that back into PowerPoint. Okay, so now we have our clickable box, and we'll get to what we're going to do with that in a second. But before we do that, I want to talk about another clickable object, and that's simply a transparent box. What you're going to do is insert a shape, right-click on that shape to bring up the Format Picture dialog. This is what the Format Picture dialog looks like, and you're going to format that box or whatever shape it is to have 100% transparency. It's very important that it has a solid fill, so PowerPoint knows that you're clicking on it, but we want to set it to 100% transparency so you can't see it. Hyperlinks are, generally speaking, are ways to connect to the web. And so this is the way I connect out the various newspaper articles and John Stewart videos. First thing I have to do is generate that clickable object. But once I have it, then I right click on that object and I select hyperlink. And I simply type in the URL at the address line. So now when I click on that object, I'm going to go to that website. And it's really easy to get back to PowerPoint because you simply close the web browser and you're back right in PowerPoint. Now there's a lot of different things and PowerPoint gets a little bit confusing for what they call hyperlinks because there's another term called action links. And there's a lot of overlap in what they do. So you might get some of these actions through hyperlinks, but I use the action links window to get to them. So an action link is generally a way to jump to other areas in the same PowerPoint, go to other PowerPoints. So throughout this video, I've basically been opening up other PowerPoints, other programs, and you can also go to URLs through the action link. So it's again, it's kind of a redundant thing with a hyperlink. To use action links, again, you need this clickable object. And on the insert tab, click action after you've selected this clickable object. From the action settings menu, you can choose a variety of hyperlinks. So here again, where it's confusing because we're in the action link settings and they're calling them hyperlinks. But you can go to the next slide, the previous slide, the first slide, the last slide. You can end the show, do a custom show. You can go to any slide in your PowerPoint. So that's how I created my index as I created these clear circles over those circles before in my index. And they would jump to various slides in my PowerPoint. You can enter URLs other PowerPoint presentations, sorry about the typo, you can go to other files. Note that you can also select whether you actually need to click on the clickable object or if you just need to move the mouse over it. Triggers are a way to make clicks begin specific animations. So I'm going to assume that most of us have kind of a general idea about animations. You can definitely explore them by opening up the animation pane. Basically, the custom animation pane is a way to look at all the different types of effects. So you can make things appear or go away. You can add emphasis and you can do motion paths. Once you have the animation, then the trigger is the way to actually cause that animation to occur. So I'm clicking on a trigger down here, and this is animating up. I'm clicking on this right here, and the animation is going down. So what I'm trying to point out then, by using this example of an index, is it allows us to hold back animations when they don't want those animations to occur, 
and it allows us to bring forth animations when we want them to come forth. The way to use triggers is once an animation is created, you can access triggers through the effect option. So what you do is you go to the timing, and I couldn't get it to paint over, so I'm going to just jump out of PowerPoint and show you. So I've got several animations down here. Essentially, I'll click on one, I'll go to timing, tab might be close, so we'll open that up, and you'll see that that is going to trigger up, or it's going to animation up when I click on group 46. So it's really just a matter of tying an animation to a trigger, and that trigger is a particular object or clickable object that you've created. Now one of the things you might appreciate already is that there's a lot of objects in the PowerPoint, and so it can be very hard to keep track of object number 46. And so one thing that can be very helpful is to understand how to get to the selection pane. You can find this on the Home tab. In the Editing section, click on Select and then select Selection Pane from the Select button. The Selection Pane is basically going to help you keep track of these clickable objects. And it can be very important because in this index that I used to make this PowerPoint, these are how many clickable objects I have created. Try to create an overall presentation or map of the different techniques and where I use them. For So for nonlinear, I use clickable objects. I used animation and triggers. And I use the selection pane, of course. For organization, it's mainly clickable objects and hyperlinks. For different motion paths, scenario solving, I need those clickable objects. And then generally action links and the selection pane. Podcasting, I guess I already kind of recorded that in here, but it's just using the record narration button within Slideshow. This is a little YouTube on how to put YouTube into PowerPoint. And wouldn't it be awesome if it worked, since that's what it's trying to do? but it's just not loading up right now because I'm trying to record and do a lot of things at once. Thank you for listening to this little presentation on some of the things you may be able to do to enhance PowerPoint or you might find useful to enhance PowerPoint.